see. Now, what I can do here that I can't do to PV is point out that that is the road that I'm traveling on, snaking up the other side of the hill. Um, which you probably wouldn't see if I had a downward angle. Um, but on a 360, I could concentrate your view on that. And I could concentrate your view on that as I went around these corners. Okay, maybe not right there. Um, but as I came around these corners, I could concentrate your view on it. And I could even horizon stabilize it so that the bike rotated around the viewpoint. Uh, which I'm sure would look very weird, but um, cool nonetheless. Oh yeah, look at this. It's a shame I'm stuck behind people, but honestly the, the surface here doesn't look too great. I wouldn't be going that much faster. But seriously, come on guys. 25, really? Oh nice, it's 40 all the way down, but then we get a national on the way up? Cool. That's, uh, that's great for efficiency. Mind you, I wouldn't want to take a truck down that road. Weesh. I bet there are people who do. I bet there are trucks who get like rooted down this road all the time. One thing is, I can just start to out accelerate these guys. Um, so, I can do an overtake if the opportunity presents itself. It's getting the opportunity, really. Like, with those twisty bits, there's just no way you can pass. And then you get to a straight bit, and it's like, oh, there's something coming the other way. kind of the argument I make with people are like oh but it doesn't you know you can't go very fast because you ruin the battery it's like yeah but <laughs> every three or four miles is another 40 minute 40 limit I mean you know <laughs> that's just the way that these roads are like yeah I could have come up there at like 80 on the VFR it would have been a bit foolhardy but I could have done it could have come up there faster if I really had a death wish. But, you know, when you're out, like just regular riding and enjoying the scenery in the road, you're not actually going as fast as you think you are. Oh, yeah. I think the place. Yeah, Clee Hill. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. Uh. Now see, if I had a 360, I'd be able to just like, turn the camera that way, and be like, yeah, check it out. And the cool thing about the 360 is I don't have to like, physically turn the camera. I just have to like, go and post to be like, give me this angle, please. Um, that is quite difficult like for me to do post-processing because you know my computer is not very powerful uh, it's a bit of a dinosaur but I mean I do have my work laptop which is like a 20 20 MacBook Pro sub variety um, and I have broad permission to you know, do home computing things on it whilst I have it. Um, that's company policy, which is cool. Um, you know, many things that really sort of... Uh, yeah, there's many things that I'm not really all that enthusiastic about about my job, but uh, at least, you know, they're, they're pretty cool like that. 
งานแต่ actually one of my colleagues just did a PC he's like yeah I just use my work laptop for everything I'm like okay I don't think I could do that. I, I'm always too nervous when I'm carrying my work laptop somewhere because, like, if someone stole it, they would have access to all of my work stuff. I mean, not that my work stuff is really sensitive or anything like that. Um, but there is kind of a difference between, like, your work laptop with all of like your work access keys and stuff on it and. Your personal laptop, which it's like, oh, this is only my stuff that I've lost. Mm, yeah, let's go and park here. What? I'm not going to stop here for long, but I thought it would make a little bit more interesting in the video if I just took a couple of photographs somewhere up here. Um, Let's take a photograph out that way. Oh, okay. Okay. I mean, they're capacitive touch gloves, but yeah, there's a limit. There is definitely... Yeah, I've had this problem with my paws, too. Um, as, as weird of a statement as that is. Um, my wolf verset has... Passive touch claws don't always work as well as you might like expect them to. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna run this tree, <laughs> but they work. They work okay. Like just like for I put my phone out of my pocket and now I can check my messages, type things, see if that person I wanted to hang out with. Is available to hang out. Where is panorama mode? They okay. They've done something weird with it. Let's start over there. Let's see if we can not fuck this up. It's gonna be a pretty crazy panorama. Take a look at that. What's that look like? Can you see that? Here we go. Looks pretty cool. Okay, now we're on photo. Let's grab a quick photo of the motorbike. You know, with some scenery behind it. We'll avoid that oil on the way out. Ta-da! Oh! Oh, there's people in the way. That's, that's sad. Look at that. Beautiful. Cool. What was that? Forty-seven percent. Well, okay. I reckon forty-seven will be fine to get us to our next port of call. Phone. 
What? It's turned itself off. Yeah, I know mobile phone one disconnected. Can mobile phone one turn on again, please? Why did you turn off? Sometimes it does this. Like, you're try trying to turn it on and it just turns off. You're trying to, like, unlock it. And you just, like, you press the button and it comes up and then it goes away. And then you're like, no, turn on. You're pressing the, like, the power button and it's like, no. <laughs> but, but, like, that's not helpful. Yeah, cool. Oh, that's so beautiful, though. Look at that. Here we go. Let's take some more photos. Phone! Did you do this again? It's tur Turn on! Oh my god! just keeps turning itself off. Stop it! It's really infuriating, like... There is a really cool view happening right now. I'm really liking it. And my phone is just ruining the moment. Oh, it's just... It's just gone directly to zero percent. What the fuck? Yeah. <sighs> fuck sex. So 47% just immediately gone to zero. Oh. Turned itself off. Just when you wanted to take a picture. Yeah, I know. It's beautiful. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Might be the cold as well. If, yeah. if you had it in your in your pocket here. Yeah, keep it in here. Might be the cold. Yeah. It's sapping the battery as well. Nice. You're electric? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Twenty six K? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got twenty twenty one kilowatt battery pack is that? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, get a few miles out of that then, yeah? Well in this cold weather it's only about a hundred. Yeah, that's all right. That but that's, yeah. Yeah, that's doing these kind of roads, trying to get up to sixty and then down yeah. the tons and stuff, yeah, that's, you know. Hundred miles in it. Oh, today's plenty, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> we're only we're only doing about hundred and ten today, aren't we? So Yeah. Yeah, where well, you go. Yeah, so... That's enough, isn't it? Yeah. It does rapid charging as well. Yeah. 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 I did a bit of a YouTube on these different bikes, um, the electric bikes. There's quite a few coming out now. They're getting yeah. really popular. Yeah. Yeah. I must admit, I'm thinking, for commuting, I'm thinking to get the small one in a couple of years. Well, my son works for a Chinese company who sell, sell 125s yeah. for kids to pass the test on. And they do quite a few um, super soaker they're called 
Oh yeah, they're, they're little 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 ones. Yeah, they're cool. Absolutely, yeah, about yeah. three and a half, four thousand, and I thought about one, but I need, I'm, I'm a carpenter, I need my van for my tools, so for, for me, for commuting, for you, yeah. it'd be ideal, but yeah. a bit more distance and a bit more range yeah. would be ideal. Yeah, they're alright, they do 60. Yeah. yeah. You get about 30 miles out of them, I'd say. Yeah. 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 yeah, I've got a 30 mile round trip for work, so I want... Really, I want something that about that's got about 100 miles right? yeah. so I don't have to charge it up every day. So, but in a couple of years, when that's uh, on its last legs, because that's my commuter bike, I'm, uh, when that's on its last legs, I'm going to uh, go electric, I think. Yeah, I was in a similar position yeah. of a VFR 800. I was like, oh, I'll wait a couple of years and I'll get an electric. But then the whole of the electrics on my VFR has failed. Just because of what it's an 18 year old bike, you know, the water is gotten into all the connectors and yeah. stuff. You bring it into a dealership, they'd be like, oh, we'll spray a bit of grease and it'll be fine. Yeah. And it's broken again in three months' time. Yeah. You know, so I just like, screw it. I need a new bike. Yeah. Well, that's what Good I on you. Good yeah. on you for going electric. That's yeah. How is the Himalayan? Yeah, brand new, brand new. Um, it's the E5. Mm. It was 5,000, fully loaded with all the panniers and everything. Yeah. Um, I've got a hot. We've got. I've got. We've got Harley's as we well. Got Harley's as well. We did. That we use in the summer <laughs> yeah, for camping and stuff. The old 883, 21 years old. Yeah. She, she just keeps going. She's like a tank. I uh, I went over to India uh, a few years back to do some training. Train up some guys over there. One of the guys in the team, he had like a, a 350 Royal Enfield. He actually took it up into the Himalayas with him. Yeah. It was like fair play. But originally, they were built for the people that lived. In the mountains, yeah, there. and that's why Royal Enfield built those. They didn't build them for our market, and an 80, I think it's 80 percent of Royal Enfield bikes are sold in India. Yeah, the rest come to us and all around yeah. the world. But yeah, well, I mean, I can't fault it. It's uh, yeah, cheap thrills. It, it is, isn't it? it is. I mean, I've got a caravan in Mid Wales. Yeah, and there's lots and lots of hills. So what I'm aiming to do is the wife's going down in the car with the dog. I'm going down on that. I'm just trekking up the mountains yeah. and doing a bit of green laning and stuff. You know, nothing serious. Yeah. But well, I mean, people talk about them and they're like, ah, oh, you know, they don't make as much power as Western bikes. But it doesn't matter for roads like this. No. If you're just out for a bit of a bit of a cruise the, the weekend, it doesn't matter. I've, I've, I've given up racing. I mean, I'm 62 years old, so yeah. no, I don't race anymore. <laughs> just give me something. To, that's why I've got a Harley, because yeah. it just plods. Plods at 55, 60. It'll keep going all day. It, it, it don't go up 55. I mean, no, I don't anyway. Do. It could have an R1 and it only do yeah, 55. Yeah, I would only do 55. <laughs> It'll be going, <laughs> you know, like this. Uh, this thing's got wallops apart, but I never use any of it. No. You open the throttle and you hit like a, one of those white lines or something and it's a bit wet. Yeah. Like it's got traction control on it thankfully. I have a traction control set to full. I don't trust myself with it. I'm about it. <laughs> it's the, the torque though, isn't it, I suppose. If you hit a white line with loads of torque, it's just yeah. it's gonna go and it's gonna slip, isn't it? It's, it's a smart looking thing, isn't it? It's nice, isn't it? It is really it's pretty nice. cool. It's Italian. Is it Italian, is it? Yeah. What company is it? Uh, Energica. Energica. Yeah. It's really nice. Can, really can I take a picture of it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Really yeah really it's thing, I'll send it to our Tom Missile. He's uh, really into... Uh, I like that. I don't, I don't think I can walk out 26 grand though. It's quite... It does sound a lot. I know you're going to save if you're using it for commuting as well. But you would, wouldn't you? I mean, I'm I've worked out, I'm going to save out, when I go electric, I'm going to save over a thousand pound a year in fuel, yeah. so it does yeah. add up, doesn't it? The problem I have with this thing is, um, there's only one company that'll insure it. Oh, is that? Yeah. Because it's an exotic bike. Yeah? Uh, and the price of it. Ah. There's only one company that'll insure it, so... Like... I've done about 1100 in a month. So, in about a year, I'd probably save a grand or so. Yeah, yeah, and that's just wiped out by yeah. insurance. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I had a crash a couple of years ago. So, I mean, if you've got seven years no claims bonus, that might not apply to you. Yeah. Yeah, and at our age as well, in our 50s, they, they, yeah. they don't care about us that much, do they? Yeah. Nah. 
The only thing that annoys me is I've got heated grips, yeah. but I've got no wind protection. Yes. So they're useless. That's why I've got these wee gloves on. Yeah. I must admit they, uh, they are good, the heated grips though, aren't they? Yeah. Well, they put mine on last week, or the week before. Yeah. But, uh, now that's smart, that is. Right to smart that is. Good on you for doing Good on you for going. Yeah, yeah. Going electric. I thought it was 29 grams. The rim bell breaks are probably 20 grand, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Bozachi, the Bochubo yeah, yeah. is not too bad either. Proper brakes. You can uh, you can spec it with Olin's. Yeah. But I mean, I'm never going to know the difference. Um, the and actually, well, yeah. you rarely use the brakes. It's all oh, because it's engine. And, and it's you put regen up to max. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you basically just do everything with the throttle. Yeah. And then the brakes are there in case you really need to yeah, stop. In case someone pulls out on here. Yeah. Where are you from? Hmm? Where are you from? Ireland. <laughs> oh. It is, isn't it? Just getting It is more late, I must admit. I, I pulled over, not only just because of the view, but because I was starting to get chilled, my legs, and yeah. I'm changing the. Uh, changing the. Oh. I'm going to get on with us some light. Yeah. Yeah. Have a nice ride. Yeah, and you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got to turn on. There we go. There we go. I'll show you its party trick. <laughs> That was cool. I actually forgot I was recording most of that. Is that on the outside? No, that is on the inside. Yeah, my views got all blurry. That'll clean up in a second. Those guys were cool, they were like into it. Yeah. See, that's the thing. I think a lot of people, just because they've never seen one, don't understand, like, what electric bikes are like and um, you know as as much as it's kind of a nuisance to like have to talk to every gaffer who comes along <laughs> um, like if you buy one of these you kind of have to accept you're going to be a bit of an ambassador um, because people will come up and talk to you, particularly when you're charging, like, is that an electric bike? I didn't even know they existed. Um, like back when I was charging there at, um, at Kidderminster, um, there was a guy who was like, how long have they been making those? Like at Greg's, not even at the bike, just like at Greg's, he'd, like, he'd see the bike charging and he was, uh, he was chatting to me. And it's kind of cool, but also like it can be a nuisance. But if you're gonna ride an exotic bike, you kind of have to put up with that. And yeah, that guy had a Himalayan. Um, I've not seen one of those uh, before. They're kind of a handsome little bike. Um, I know Royal Enfield gets shit, but uh, I don't think they deserve it. Pretty solid bikes. Uh, they're obviously, you know, they're, they're not what you're gonna expect if you're buying from like a premium European or Japanese brand, but uh, that doesn't matter. You know, they're really reasonably priced, and the kit's all right. Um, and like, you know, that guy, you know, he's not doing crazy stuff in it getting up towards 60s like 
Um, just up and down the back roads and stuff. I'm like, yeah, he's not, he's not pushing it any harder than I am. And um, anyone who rides motorcycles will tell you I'm not really pushing it if you watch this video. Uh, on the VFR, yeah, different story. But um, that doesn't mean that I should be doing that. And yeah, there is a certain argument that once you get to a certain point, a bike like the Himalayan is all the bike that you need. And that anecdote that I told him about India, I, I don't know, maybe I'll cut out most of the conversation with him just out of courtesy, but that anecdote that I told the guy about going out to India and um, one of the guys I was trading up like having a 350 Royal Enfield that he just like took up into the actual Himalayans. That's true. Um, yeah, that was really cool uh, to see like his photos of just like because it's not like a, it's not like the the Royal Enfield Himalayan. It's just like a regular street bike that he uses for commuting. Um, I mean, like he literally took it up into the mountains and stuff. Like, wow. That is 